Let's begin with Ferdinand Magellan's origins and a brief understanding of where he came from. Magellan was born sometime in the spring of 1480 in the northern Portuguese countryside to Dom Roy and Dona Alda Magellan, who were of minor nobility in the province of Minnow. At the age of seven, Magellan was sent to study at the nearby monastery of Villa Nova de Mora to learn the catechism, basic arithmetic, and Latin. Five years later, at the age of 12, Magellan would attend Queen Lenora's School for Pages, where he was required, among other things, to learn cartography, astronomy, and celestial navigation, skills critical for sailors and explorers. During Magellan's time studying at the Queen's School for Pages, Columbus made the discovery of the Americas for Spain. When Magellan is 19, Vasco da Gama completes the journey to India and the Far East by sea in the name of Portugal. Six years later, at the age of 25, Magellan leaves the court and enlists as a crewman setting sail for the East. Now we move into the life of Magellan as a young and experienced sailor in his physical prime, ready for adventure and new discoveries. Magellan would sail with the largest fleet ever to leave Portugal, consisting of 22 ships and over 1,900 men. When Magellan begins the journey, he is a supernumerary who was a person serving without pay and living with the crew. In December of 1505, Magellan receives a promotion to pilot's assistant aboard a Brigantum. This ship was an oar-propelled craft used to destroy blockade runners using its six carronades. After 15 months of blockading, Magellan has taken part in sinking more than 200 Arab dows. In the summer of 1507, Magellan goes with his commanding officer to engage against more Arab dows in the Indian Ocean. These skirmishes in the Indian Ocean would culminate in the beginning of 1509, when the Portuguese fleet fights the Arab fleet. During this battle, Magellan is seriously wounded, and five months later, when Magellan regains his health, he returns to duty, finding new command. So in September of 1509, Magellan enlists to sail with the fleet bound for the distant port of Malacca. In November of 1510, Magellan's career would take a turn and his destiny for her exploration would start to appear. During the total destruction of the city of Goa, it would appear Magellan did not wish to take part since he received no pay, and from this point forward would devote his life to exploration and not warfare. In July of 1511, Magellan would buy a slave by the name of Black Henry and be given the command of a caravo with the able and experienced crew. This part of Magellan's life is a bit more cloudy due to the lack of records. What is known is that upon his return and delivery of report, he was relieved of command and sent back to Lisbon. So, after eight years of adventuring in the East, Magellan would return a veteran and experienced sea captain of multiple ships, but primarily with caravels. This type of ship, the caravel, was important because it would primarily serve as Magellan's home for the great remainder of his life and because this would be the model ship that completed the first circumnavigation of the globe. The construction of this ship combined the seaworthiness of western hulls with the triangular sails of Arab dows. The sail allowed western sailors to sail against the wind by capturing the wind regardless of the direction it blew from. Without the combination of these advances in shipbuilding, circumnavigation would have been impossible. Magellan finds himself out of favor with the Portuguese royal court, but ready to attempt a journey to Asia over the Atlantic. Magellan found a supporter in the Spanish monarchy. After difficulties in assembling a crew and fleet, King Charles ordered the fleet to set sail on August 10, 1519. So Magellan set out from Seville in command of five ships, the Trinidad, San Antonio, Concepcion, Victoria, and Santiago. The crew then sailed to San Lucar de Baramita, where they would spend five more weeks due to the hesitation of the Spaniards. Magellan and a lot of his crew faced scrutiny for sailing for Spain, while being primarily Portuguese. However, on September 20, 1519, Magellan would set sail with a crew of over 270 men. Magellan's first stop was the Canary Islands, and he then went to, Cape Ver to the Cape Verde Islands. From the Cape Verde Islands, Magellan would set sail for Cape St. Augustine, Brazil. On November 27, 1519, the fleet of ships crossed the equator, and a little more than a week later, on December 6, 1519, the crew was able to spot the coast of Brazil. Magellan was very worried 
when he docked in Brazil on December 13th, 1519, because it was a Portuguese territory. In Brazil, the fleet was restocked for the journey ahead. The ships would set sail after a storm delayed them in Brazil, while on their way to a strait the Magellan thought would bring them to the Spice Islands. However, the next stop made was to the Rio de la Plata on January 10, 1520. Three months later, in March, the crew built a settlement, which they named Porto San Julian. However, while docking, a mutiny broke out that involved two of the five ship's captains. This was very unsuccessful for the, captain, for the captains because the crew remained loyal to Magellan. The captain of the Concepcion, however, was executed and the others involved were left alone along the coastline. The journey to the Spice Islands was on the move again when Magellan sent the ship Santiago ahead to go on a scouting expedition. While further down the coastline, Santiago was wrecked in a storm and the crew made it to the shoreline, from which two of the sailors returned to the fleet to get help. After this ordeal, Magellan decided to wait a few more weeks before departing again. In August 1520, the ships reached Cape Virginis and believed they had finally found the passage to the Spice Islands. Magellan decided to send the Concepcion and San Antonio ahead to check out the passage because the waters were very deep. However, San Antonio abandoned the journey and sailed back to Spain, where they arrived on November 20th, 1520. During this time, Magellan was sailing through the strait, which he labeled the All Saints Channel because they were sailing through it on All Saints Day. However, it is known today as the Straits of Magellan. On November 28th, 1520, Magellan and his crew completed their journey through the strait and arrived in the South Pacific. Magellan then named the water Mar Pacifico, or the Pacific Ocean, because of the stillness after getting through the rough strait. Magellan and his crew finally recrossed the equator on February 13, 1521. On March 6, the fleet arrived at the Marianas in Guam, which Magellan refers to as the Islands of Sails because there were a lot of sailboats. On March 16, 1521, Magellan arrives at the first Filipino island of Hananhan, with 150 men still alive. Magellan's interpreter was able to communicate with the native people, which allowed the crew to make it to Kubu. Magellan agreed to help some of the natives out by fighting on their side against other local peoples. This would lead to Magellan's death in the Battle of Mactan on April 27, 1521. On May 2, 1521, the remaining crew set sail towards Palawan with only two ships, burning Concepcion and the Philippines. The two ships and 115 crewmen that were left made it to the Spice Islands on November 6, 1521. When the crew left the islands, the Trinidad, one of the remaining ships, was taken on water and had to wait with the spices to be repaired before continuing on. However, the Victoria, the smaller ship, sailed on its way back to Spain in December of 1521. Victoria made it around Cape of Good Hope in May of 1522, where 22 more men died due to starvation. On July 9, 1522, Victoria pulled into a Portuguese port where 13 more men were abandoned so as not to lose the cargo of spices. On September 6, 1522, the crew in the last ship, Victoria, made it back to Spain after almost three years of being gone. The crew was not even paid in full, because the profit of the spices was minimal. Later on in 1525, four of the original 55 crewmen from the Trinidad arrived in Spain, while the others died in war from diseases. Magellan became the first voyager to circumnavigate the globe, as well as navigate to the strait that connected the Atlantic and Pacific. The voyage also helped the world see that the Earth was larger than expected and consisted of a lot of water. Magellan's crew saw some unusual animals on the journey that were described as a black goose that had to be skinned instead of plucked, which was the penguin, and now named the Magellanic Penguin. Magellan's crew also discovered two of the closest galaxies to Earth and were named the Magellanic Clouds. The last thing that came out of Magellan's circumnavigation was an international dateline because the dates that the crew members had and the dates that the people in Spain had were different. Magellan's body was not recovered following the Battle of Mactan, and he did not receive the credit from his peers that he richly deserved. Today he is credited with being one of the greatest explorers of all time.